Good afternoon, everyone. Today I'm going to talk about sublaminar wiring. Over several thousand wires under the lamina. It was first described by Luque in 1976 in Mexico. What are the modes of usage? It can be used as a standalone wire in C1, C2. It can be used, used with the H rods, the Luque rods. It can be used with hard shell, hard shell rectangle, closed loops, frames, rectangles. And nowadays as a hybrid system between the pedicle screws and the wires. The advantages are it is a versatile, it has versatile indications, wide applicability, technically not demanding, excellent corrective potential in all uh, planes, sagittal, translation, and derotational, obviates need for post-operative bracing, climate compliance, and simplistic, inexpensive, time-tested. It is an extra cortical hold on bone. It is advantageous in osteoporosis. Extra osseous implant, it has a good pull-out property. More forgiving, technically less demanding, less gadgetry. Being a semi-rigid type of fixation, it allows for some collapse or settling of anterior column, which may be beneficial for fusion. Used as a salvage in failed pedicle screw fixation. Sublimna wires were used widely with great effect for many years until the mid 1980s, until the development of third generation spinal instrumentation system backed by the great metal lobby, the marketing team of them. So uh, the safety of sublimna wire was put under cloud. Many papers came out with saying that uh, Sublaminar wire caused lots of neurological complications in all the places where it was used and multiple papers were come and it came into disrepute. But then came this paper from Boachi in 2000 in spine, safety of sublaminar wires with the Isola instrumentation for the treatment of idiopathic scoliosis. Well, there were 1366 wires put uh, by him and there were no patient with adolescent idiopathic scoliosis having any neurological complication. What he concluded was despite the increased complexity, complexity of spinal instrumentation system, sublaminar wires placement is a safe and useful adjunct in surgical treatment of neurologically intact patients with idiopathic scoliosis. We come here, we stand here in the defense of sublaminar wires which has been charged with being a neurologically dangerous tool for instrumenting the spine. Well, we have proofs. We have put 3,317 wires, which stand testimony to this trial. Coming to the technique and the safety tips, well, putting sublaminar wire, though is simple, but there are very specific steps. You go through them and then, well, you will do a very good job of putting them. The steps are first, you need to have a very good interlaminar exposure, followed by good wire contouring, the passage of the wire through the exposure and securing and locking the wires. And then the final, tightening the wires to the Luke rods or the heart shield. So as we come, the interlaminar exposure in the thoracolumbar spine, the spinous processes, they actually overlap the underlying lamina. So you need to have a proper exposure of the interlaminar space. As you can see, you may have to remove a lot of spinous processes to go and see the yellow ligament. So this is where you need to go all the way up to here and then get that cleared to see the dura. You have to do this at all the levels and from one end to the other. So you can pass the wires very easily and safely. As you can see in this video, we are trying to remove the ligamentum flavum from in between the spinous uh, lamina and the spinous processes. Here care has to be taken that you don't bite on the bone. Only the ligament has to be taken out and has to be taken out at all levels. As you can see, nice clearance of the interlaminar space is your first step and the most important step of putting the wires. So 
So once the uh, steps is, uh, once the interlaminar spaces are done, then you come to putting the wires. So before putting the wires, you need to know what type of wires. These are the stainless steel wires. These we call uh, wires which are 18 gauze wires, which are double looped and on one side and shouldered on the other side. And as we say, bend it like Bhojraj. This wires, it has uh, been pre-made wires. Initially, we used to have a spindle of wires and tried to make these wires on table, which used to be very messy and uh, very dangerous. So what we did, uh, not we, but Dr. Bhojraj, that he made these pre-bent wires and he shaped it in a uh, inverted question mark uh, shaped wires where there are two wires of 18 gauze which are bent in front and are shouldered on the other side. So these give a very smooth entry point for the wires so they don't pierce the dura and they are very safe. And because of these bends, it gives you a very easy and simple, like a needle uh, going, uh, thread going through a needle. So it just, uh, you can uh, pass the wires very safely and quickly. So here you can see from the prepared interlaminar space, you put the wire on one end and it just uh, scrapes under the lamina and pops out from the other side. As you can see, you just pick it up with the needle holder and you pull it up. When you're doing this, you have to remember that you pull both sides of the wire. So you're not uh, here. And this you see is the locking of the wire. So you pull the wire and lock the wires. So when you lock these wires, they have to be in this manner so that it doesn't go on hitting the uh, spinous, uh, what we say, the cord, when you are putting multiple wires. Now, this is another wire we are putting under the lumbar spine, scraping under the lamina, and it pops out from the other side, on the superior side, always go from below upwards. Pull it up. When you're pulling this wire, you pull both the wires up and then lock it. Lock it with your thumb over the lamina. So, now you put multiple wires after putting multiple wires over all the segments, you bend the heart shield. The heart shield has to be bent and contoured as per your requirement. Whether you want to put a kyphotic uh, curve, you want to put a uh, lordotic curve, depending upon where you are putting the heart shield. Once the heart shield is contoured, the wire are put and uh, put under the heart shield and the heart shield is locked to the spine. There are three types of uh, tightening. The first tightening of the wire is on itself so that you don't mix uh, yourself uh, because there are so many multiple wires, you don't mix uh, one on the other. The second tightening is the tightening what you're seeing here where the entire wire is tightened till you touch the heart shield. And the final tightening is happening when the, uh, you do it with your plier and the wire turns on itself. That's when your final tightening occurs. So once all the final tightening is occur has happened, you need to cut the extra wires. You have to be careful while doing this because the wires can fly off. So you need to catch hold of the end of the wire which can fly off. And once everything is done, the heart shield sits very much snugly to the spine and the spine contours to the shape of the heart shield. The interspinal space can be filled by uh, gel foam and then you can put as much graft as you want. So we have done 3,317 wires under the uh, lamina uh, in a total of 227 patients. Multiple uh, cases of deformity, fractures, infection and tumors. I'll be showing you a few cases one by uh, one after another. But in all this, we had no cord-related problems. We had uh, less than 1% of radiculopathy or what we would say root problems. So neurological complications were minimal 
in all these patients. So it has been used in uh, with uh, HROD uh, with sublamina wire in uh, scoliosis. It has been used uh, with a heart shield uh, sublamina and sublaminar wire for correcting scoliosis. It, we have very good results, long term results, and this is like very much cost effective. Even in kyphosis, this can be used to correct the kyphosis with multiple. Uh, you have segmental corrections, as you can see a very good correction of this kyphosis. Even clinically, they look absolutely straight. In fractures, well, you have fractures where there is a thoracolumbar spine fracture with complete paraplegia. You can use this as a very quick and uh, quick surgery and uh, you can reduce the fracture in no time. This is a implant of choice in uh, osteoporotic uh, compression fractures because the hold here is not the body, but the uh, uh, lamina, which is a cortical bone. As you can see, we can do a lot of uh, good uh, hold on the spine with sublaminar wire and the heart shield. And uh, along with this, do a good uh, decompression job by doing a transpedicular decompression. It can be used in tumors also. This is an example of an aneurysmal bone cyst which was uh, excised and it was uh, fused uh, using, uh, it was stabilized using a sublaminar wire. It has a lot, this is a good long-term uh, result of this patient. It can be used in infection like Cox, where you can have a heart shield uh, sublaminar wire to stabilize the spine. Thoracolumbar instability also can be treated by uh, using the wires and uh, the heart shield. They help tremendously. The cost, uh, the ease, and the safety is really good. It can also be used. This is one thing which I would like to bring uh, to everyone's attention as a salvage procedure for failed pedicle screw. Here you can see a T lift done at a thoracolumbar region, which has failed miserably with cage coming out uh, because of the bone being osteoporotic. We went, removed the cage, we removed the implant and salvaged the patient with a heart shield sublaminar wiring. And the patient is doing absolutely fine. So the carry home message here is sublaminar wiring is still a versatile, cost-effective, time-tested and a simple modality of spinal instrumentation. With basic safety tips, it is an extremely safe implant with no extra risk of neurological deficit. Simplicity, versat versatility, and cost effectiveness makes it an ideal implant for the third world countries, as shown in this presentation. Thank you.